Hi guys, today we're going to talk about a stick grip or a related series of stick grips called the caveman grip. Okay, and it's so named because of course it looks like a caveman just gripping a club, ready to hit a mastodon in the face or something. Okay, um, and it's not the real name of the grip necessarily, but uh, actually I don't know what the real name of the grip is, and I think a lot of people just call it a caveman grip, sort of pejoratively because they say you shouldn't do it. It's often seen as a negative thing, but it was used for probably hundreds of years by a lot of different European and American rudimental cultures as a standard functional grip. And it was typically played in traditional grip on a field drum, so of course we're mostly talking about the right hand here, although you can do it in both hands, it works just as well in the left hand. So in my uh, community feed section of my channel, I asked if anyone wanted to learn about the caveman grip, and of course I got an 80 plus percent response of yes, you did want to learn about the caveman grip. And the reason it even came up is because I was doing an online group class on basil drumming with Klaus Hessler, and he has talked about the caveman grip a little bit, and it really derailed the discussion because a lot of people had questions. What is this caveman grip? Why would I ever do it? How does it work? And that wasn't really the point of the lesson that Klaus was trying to give, but, you know, he had to sort of answer all the questions. Now, realistically, I'm as close to a caveman as you're going to get. Uh, prominent brow ridge, ape-like six-foot-four arm span, uh, and I've actually had my DNA tested. I'm an extremely high percentile of Neanderthal DNA, so uh, you'd be hard to find someone more caveman-like than me. What does that have to do with drumming? Nothing. Interesting side note. <laughs> anyway, so from one caveman to another, the caveman grip actually works pretty well, and there are a couple of them. But uh, normally you would see people playing traditional grip, uh, something like this, especially like in a sort of marching band context. You'd have a sort of American-esque grip here. Um, the left hand at this point isn't that relevant, and you can play a lot of chopsy stuff this way. But you can also do that same thing, gripping like a caveman. Right? I can get the same sort of roll dexterity in a totally different way, caveman style. Now, there are a couple of different caveman grips, like I said. The first caveman grip, the one used in uh, basil drumming, is literally exactly what you would assume. You grip the stick, it touches your palm all the way across your hand, right here under your fingers, um, and uh, it doesn't move around. There's no gap. Uh, in your thumb, like there would be sometimes using like a German grip. Um, it's just it's just a fist on the stick. Um, and the way that this works is because you can't really use your wrist all that effectively, like your range of motion is not that good when your fist is balled up like this, um, you end up using a lot of forearm rotation, which mirrors what you do when you play traditional grip with the left hand and the underhand grip, which I have a whole video on that, which I'll link to over here somewhere. But uh, when you're doing the right hand caveman style, you're going to rotate that forearm around. So if you're trying to play double strokes, they're both coming in sort of in that rotational angle, rather than if you were playing uh, another type of uh, traditional grip, where you'd have one sort of going vertically like this, and the other coming in rotationally, and they'd be different. Well, the caveman grip actually makes more symmetrical sense because both hands are essentially doing the same thing. Now, the reason this works uh, is because you can actually create the fulcrum that you need to play uh, somewhere around your middle finger um, and between your finger and your palm. And the stick actually will wobble around in your hand even though there's no obvious gap or hole for it to do so. Uh, I think it's just like the flexibility of your hand tissue allows the stick to actually move around in there. It's really hard to hold it so tightly that it won't move. And we're not suggesting, of course, when we say if I or Klaus Hessler or anyone else says caveman grip, we're not suggesting that you white knuckle it, right? We're still gripping relaxedly, just like any snare drum grip. Um, and so the stick can move around. And thus, when you play something like a double stroke, you can get that characteristic rebound. It's not that bad. Um, but you also have really good control over the stick. You're not going to drop the stick no matter how hard you play or how complicated of a pattern you play or if the drum's moving around because you're walking. You're definitely not going to drop this. You got all five fingers on it. OK, 
Okay, the other variation of the caveman grip is what uh, the Moeller book talks about and what was used uh, ostensibly during the American Civil War, which is more of a fencing grip, is what some books call it. Um, it is a pinky-centric grip, so you place your pinky where you would normally have your fulcrum. So if I were to play in like a German grip, my fulcrum would be here. I place my pinky there, and then I have an open hand, right? There's now space in between my thumb and forefinger and the stick for the stick to move around. So it's actually uh, a slightly less fist-like grip, but only slightly. And similarly, I, I can play just as well. Uh, I say just as well, obviously I'm better at a normal you know, drum set style grips, but it is possible to use this grip uh, and play well. Now the advantage of the pinky style grip is that you have very minimal contact with the stick in your hand, and especially the end of the stick. If you're playing really hard and really loud because you're outside in a marching military environment, um, a lot of fatigue can be transmitted into your hand through the vibration of the stick. So a pinky grip allows the stick to vibrate more. None of that end vibration is being translated into your hand, which means you can play from over your head, which used to be a common practice, and you're not going to get that stinging uh, hand destroying sensation that you might get if you were to have, uh, say, a German grip and do the same thing. So, for the sake of demonstration purposes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Wilcoxon's 113 because it's pretty easy and has a lot of double strokes in it. Um, and I'll zoom the camera in a lot tighter and I'll play it once with a standard uh, modern type of grip with, you know, normal finger technique. Then I'll play it in the pinky style caveman grip of Moeller and American Civil War era. And then I will play it in the full fist um, sort of middle fingerish grip uh, from the Basil caveman grip. And hopefully uh, you don't hear a lot of difference in the sound, just the difference in the look of the grip. So hopefully that comparison made it really obvious that you can in fact play the same type of licks at the same sort of speeds. So in a weird side note, I actually have a student, she's like six years old, and we're doing internet lessons because, you know, pandemic, and so I can't really get in there and, and focus on her grip too much um, because, you know, I'm not in the same room. Uh, and so even though I mentioned on it, pretty much weekly basis that she should be using more of a German grip and using her wrists in a conventional manner, uh, she has just decided that she's going to double caveman it and play everything with the wrist rotation. And a lot of people would say this is wrong, and I, I kind of agree in a modern context that it's not the best way to be playing the snare drum these days, uh, but uh, she actually can play a lot of stuff. She has learned um, all the roles from the PAS sheet. She can play drags. She can play Flams. She can play uh, things like dragadiddles and drag paradiddles and stuff like that. Um, no problem. Uh, her chops are not impacted at all by the fact that she plays in a double caveman grip instead of a conventional German grip. So uh, we'll have to sort that out at some point. Hopefully in-person lessons will come back and I can kind of mold her into the more conventional modern American style of playing. But it's working, so you know I kind of just have to let her go on it, or we would never focus on anything else. Um, and her chops are such that it's pretty impressive for a six-year-old in, in any kind of grip. So if she can do it, anyone else can do it. Anyway, that's the caveman grip from a real caveman, sort of. Uh, so have fun. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. See you next time.